are doing a remote from Dutch Fest 2017 on Elam in the Crestwood Palace area on uh, Central. Having a great time. And I would say it's about 100 degrees. It's probably the most, it's a record setting day here in September, but we're blessed with the weather we have here. We're going to take a look around. The, the warmer, hot weather is not curtailing anything. There is a large crowd here, so we're going to give you a preview and a show of what goes on at Dutch Fest here at Elam. Stay with us. AC Variety takes pride in showcasing the stories that the big networks have no interest in telling. This is one of those stories. Dames and heren, goedemorgen. And uh, we are so blessed to have all of you here this morning. And we're going to be making our way through the village of Elam. But we need to get these streets clean. We've got some dignitaries coming and the streets are dirty. So we're going to clean the streets. So, jongens, kinderen, moeten we deze uh, straten uh, schoonmaken. En dan gaan we naar de grote tent. So, uh, have a great day. As Burgemeister of Elam, I am so blessed to have you here today. And now we'll start our street cleaning process. Let's go. All right. Klaus is here, and he's got wonderful treats that he's passing out along the parade route. We are on our way to the main stage, but we've got to get these streets cleaned on the way there. And for those of you that are looking to participate in the main stage activities, please follow the parade to the main stage. Again, those of you who are participating in the main stage, Good morning again, everyone. And so now we will begin the uh, opening ceremonies. And I want to invite Marianne Tigelar and with her granddaughter, Ella Beckbar, will give a greeting in Dutch and then Ella will translate in English. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Om te beginnen willen we u allemaal hartelijk welkom heten op het Nederlandse feest op Elam. We would like to start by welcoming you to the Dutch Fest in Elam. We zijn blij te zien dat zoveel mensen de tijd hebben genomen om hier te komen. We are very glad to see that so many of you have taken the time to be here today. We hebben ons best gedaan om ook dit jaar weer een Hollandse sfeer te scheppen. We, we tried our best to once again give you the taste of the atmosphere and traditions of the Netherlands. We hope that you have a very nice day and that you can enjoy the winkeltjes, the Hollands eten and the attractions. It is our wish that you will have a wonderful time visiting the shops, eating the Dutch foods and enjoying the entertainment offered today. We are thankful to God that it not rain today and that he has given us a good day. It is a little bit heat. 
We are very thankful to God that it isn't raining today and that he gave us a good day, and yes, a hot one. We zijn ook dankbaar voor u zelf, de geweldige mensen die hier werken en de kinderen en volwassenen die God in deze school en werkplaats geplaatst heeft. Yeah, we are also grateful for Elam itself, the great people who work here, and the students and adults who God placed together in this school and workshop. And natuurlijk for all vrijwilligers and gasten die deze dag mogelijk gemaakt hebben. And of course for all the volunteers and visitors who together have made this day possible. And nu vraag ik me af hoeveel mensen mij verstaan hebben. Now I'm wondering how many people understood the Dutch part of this welcome. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just build all the way, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, nogmaals willen we jullie hartelijk danken dat u vandaag gekomen bent en bedankt voor uw aandacht. Thank you very much once again for being here and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marianne and Ella. That was wonderful. And now we're going to have both first the United States National Anthem and then the Dutch National Anthem. And they'll both be uh, performed by Sierra and Tia Rieger and Isabella Zimmerman. Their children, the children are students at Timothy Christian School and they'll be accompanied by uh, Sierra and Tia's mother, Jody Rieger. Ladies? Well, this year we're, we're blessed. We've got a new guest. We have the Honorable State Representative Justin Slaughter from the 27th District, and I'm going to invite him up now to make a few remarks. Thank you very much for being here. Good morning. Thank you for, thank you for having me, Bill. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, this is awesome, especially on a 100 degree 
day. Thank you for being here. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed just the time that I've had uh, back at the farmer's market. Um, it's extremely important, um, in, in my opinion, that um, you know, as we push forward uh, in this country and in this world, that we certainly be knowledgeable and understanding of many different cultures. And so I've, I've really enjoyed kind of embracing and learning a little bit more about the Dutch, uh, our Dutch roots today. And so um, I've had a fun time doing that. Um, it's extremely, also it's extremely important that we continue to protect and provide uh, the critical programs, services, initiatives, and resources that entities and organizations like Elam Christian Services um, have and that are able to provide to our, our, some of our most vulnerable citizens that uh, may be impacted by disabilities. And so uh, the reason why I love this organization is because it's not just about caring for that population, but it's lifting up that population and empowering that population. Um, and so uh, glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Looking forward to not just working with Elam, but working with, with you, with you, the people. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Reverend President of Honor. And now I want to introduce uh, Elam's board president, Dr. Frederick Weisman. Fred. Thank you, Bob. Um, I certainly want to welcome all of you on behalf of the board of uh, directors of, of this wonderful institution, and thank you for coming. I hope you spend a lot of money today uh, and enjoy all of the festivities. Um, if you're wearing orange, as I am, or if you have anything on that's close to orange, welcome to the tribe. And I say that because the national color of the Netherlands is orange. And I learned recently that the red, white, and blue of the flag of, of the country actually started out as red, orange, and blue. And it somehow became red over, over the, the years. But in Holland, uh, national events and celebrations usually have that flag and those colors, the tricolor, and then with an orange banner above it. So it's, it, it, it says that it's celebrating the national heritage of the House of Orange um, and, and the uh, history of the Netherlands. But to go back to, to welcome you, welcoming you on behalf of the Board of, of Directors, I would like to mention all of their names. Um, we're a, a, a group of 12 people. Bert de Young, Bev Ozinga, Bill Zanstra, Brian Page, Deborah Van Proyen, Joel Tameling, Karen DeVries, Casey Hagstrom, Mackenzie Heiser, Paul Bukema, and Renita Vinsolkema. And those people put forth a great deal of effort on behalf of Elam, their time and their talents to organize, to help to organize and to help uh, with the administration oversee the operation of the entire organization, which runs like a well-oiled clock, thanks to Dr. Robota Um I also want to point out that uh, Renita Vonsolkema, I don't know if Renita is here, there she is in the back. Would you give, give her a hand, please, because she organizes this entire event. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's a lot of effort that goes into this, from the putting up of tents and the mowing of grass and organizing all of the physical surroundings, the tremendous effort put forth by our maintenance department as well as a lot of volunteers. So if you would please thank them as well. So once again, thank you on behalf of the Board of Directors uh, for being here. And again, I'll finish as I started. Please spend a lot of money. <laughs> thank you very much, Fred. And now I'd like to introduce uh, to you, some of you for the first time and others uh, for many times, uh, Bill Lodewijk, who's been the president of Elam now since uh, 2000. And on this, our 22nd Dutch Fest, Bill is going to give you a welcome and prayer. Bill? So this is a, this is a weight loss Dutch Fest for me. Uh, I'm going to be sweating a lot today, I think. And uh, we're just blessed that all of you can be with us. I want to welcome all of you. Um, I would like to say uh, a special thank you to a few folks who make this event possible. 
most of the actual operating expenses and costs for Dutch Festival are covered by our wonderful sponsors. And you can see many of them listed on the banner above me who have just stepped out and, and sort of take care of all of our expenses so that the money that's spent here today goes directly into programming. So I wanna thank our sponsors. How many uh, volunteers do you think it makes, uh, it takes to make Dutch Fest a go? Um, here's the number that I didn't know, but it's, a, it's about 550 volunteers that make the Dutch Festival go. So I would like you to join me in giving them a big round of applause. So at Elam, one of our core values is that all of us in God's kingdom have value and purpose. And a, a part of that expression, particularly for people with disabilities, is that we're able to engage them in a meaningful way in community. And that's what happens today. And when that happens, everyone is edified. Everyone is blessed. So today is a homecoming of sorts for many of our uh, students and adults. They really look forward to this day all year long. And they don't want to leave once they get here. So if you have a chance to intersect with one of the children and adults that Elam serves, I encourage you to reach out to them, to engage them, to encourage them. And I invite you to be open to how God will use that interaction to enrich your own life. That's been my experience at Elam, and I think that's God's design. So today I hope that in this homecoming sort of environment, we all be open to that sort of interaction and what God might want to accomplish through that. I'd like to now um, close or open, close this time, but open the day formally in a word of prayer. Would you join me? Father, we pause uh, this morning to acknowledge your goodness, to acknowledge your grace and your mercy. And that's true for all of us, Lord. And we pray that in this expression of Dutch Fest that you would provide safety, that you would provide enrichment and encouragement, that today would be a day, Lord, when we are blessed and encouraged and where you are honored. We thank you for all of the volunteers, all of the sponsors, who made this day possible. And Lord, we want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In closing, I'd like to encourage you to do something I encourage you to do every year, which is three things. Fail eta, which means eat a lot. Fail plazira, which means pleasure, much pleasure, enjoy yourselves. And then fail copa, that means buy a lot. But finally today, I think more importantly than maybe any of that, fail drinka. Make sure you get enough to drink today. It's a beautiful day. Welcome to Dutch Festival. God bless you. Thank you, Bill. We're supposed to look like we're doing something. Oh, like we're working hard? Oh, we are working hard, but it's a great day. How may we serve you? Can I jump in there and talk to you? Hey, hi. How are you? Bob okay. Deckinga. How are you? Bob, great. What do you think of this weather today? Oh, the weather is a scorcher. But Bob, uh, look at the crowd. The crowd is incredible. We uh, stocked up with extra ice, All right. and we're good to go. Okay. See, they're on, they're on the, the uh, high side of the bell curve. They're ready here. Great. So, this, okay. is, this is the 22nd annual, is That's that exactly right? That's exactly right, 22nd. Okay. Do you recall, I don't know how, long, how many you've been around for, but do you recall uh, one ever being this warm? Never. It's, really? we've, we've had to deal with wind and cold. Okay, horizontal rain, I think, yes. one time, too. <laughs> but uh, nothing quite like this. This is no. incredible. You know, in a, in a, there's not a cloud in the sky in a, in a very special way. I think we're blessed. Yeah, we are blessed. The Lord's been very good. Yes. And with that, I'm going to grab a hand. Thank you. Take care and keep Take up the care. good work, we guys. We certainly will. Appreciate Stay with it. us. we got more coming from right, Dutch Fest. Well, thank you. violins and some flutes. And the trick with um, a lot of the big organs is we celeste tune. So we have like a stop flute, which is kind of normally a dull, not exciting pipe. And we take two of them the same way, and we tune them just a little bit sharp, one where, one where it should be, one a little sharp. And we get this really wonderful 2D sound. And 
And so that has two ranks. The violins, because they're a quieter pipe, they have three ranks, but we celeste two of them. The same thing with the flutes. Over here, we have like an octave down rank of violins for the counter melody. And then we have two octaves down for the bass for the counter melody. And so it, just, it goes the whole scale. But once again, we're celeste tuning, where you tune one a little sharp, or one a little bit flat. And then that gives you a completely different sound. Anyhow. Oh. We couldn't resist. We had a good little info from it. Can we ask a few questions about this magnificent order? Sure. OK. Uh, we, I'm sorry, were you guys, I didn't want to, you can stick around. As a matter of fact, you can look at the camera and wave. I think we got a Tinley Park Titan over here. So, all right. Uh, quick thing, I can get some names to find out where you guys are all from. You are? Sarah Bayless Heights, right? Okay. Uh, high school? Uh, yeah, junior. Okay. Uh, name of the school? Shout out to anybody? Well, I'm homeschooled, so, oh, that's yeah, cool. my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's, good. Mom's good for this. Okay. <laughs> I'm Lindsay, Lindsay, and I'm from Tinley Park. Okay, and you're a Titan? Yeah, I'm a senior. Okay, mm -hmm. whoa. Okay, yeah. plans for next year? Uh, yeah, college. Okay. <laughs> Don't know where yet. <laughs> uh, it's in the same boat all these years, though. And next to me over here we have... Bethany. Bethany, what's I'm going on? I'm a senior. I'm yeah. schooled. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> I'm Stacy. I'm a junior. Homeschooled. <laughs> Excellent. I'm getting a vibe here. Yeah. Like this homeschool vibe. No wonder they, yeah. they look they look very smart and very well grounded. So <laughs> that tells me it's homeschooling. And I'm Alex. I'm really shy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm homeschooled. But okay. <laughs> you know what? You're not shy. You just you just jumped right in on this. As a matter of fact, I may give Alex the microphone and go take a break. You know what I mean? Because you did great. I love it. Um, I'm Sam. Sam. And I'm She's my sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can we can we do the faces? I can definitely see that. Not, not my face. <laughs> okay. Uh, plans future? Uh, uh, college. Okay. Nothing picked out yet? Um, Cedarville University. Oh. Is that, yeah. is that Iowa? Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Gee, I'm a few states away, but what the heck. You guys have been great sports. Thank you for sticking around. Thank we're going to yeah. do a quick organ interview, and then we're going to quiz you on what he told you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, this magnificent instrument. I never saw one before, so okay. kind of tell me what we're looking at. Okay, um, what you're looking at is a Dutch street organ. All right. And the Dutch street organs were popular, say, from about 1910 till about World War II. And you would see them on big carts with a wheel in the center and a little wheel in the back, and they would push them up and down the streets. And they would play these throughout Amsterdam. At the time, you know, you didn't have air conditioning, the windows would be open, and stuff like that. So you would have a lot of the stuff going on, and it, was, it became very popular. During World War II, after the Nazis moved in, all of the stuff came off the streets. At the end of World War II, um, some of the stuff came back, but a lot of the stuff didn't because it was, it was old, it was beat up at the time, it, did, it didn't survive storage. And then in the 50s and 60s, there started to be a resurgence an interest in this all over again and so um, they still make them today and you'll see them over in Holland and places like that. Um, this one here was actually made in 1968. It was, it's a newer organ but it's made by the original generation. Okay. The guy who made it, his name was Arthur Bursons. His dad um, had a business and Arthur took over the business in 1928 from his dad and so he made stuff whether the street organs or cafe organs, um, his whole lifetime. And in 1967, his partner died, so he decided to retire. Then he got bored, and so between his 80th and 90th birthday, he made about 17 of these, about two a year. This was the first one. This is the prototype of the 68 key persons. This is really a 69 key. All the others were 68. And that's the number of notes it plays. Okay, I, at this point, an excellent presentation. When I, the type of wood that this is made out of. Um, most of the the, the, frame, cabinet. the cabinet itself is mostly beech. Okay. Because uh, it's just a popular tree in Europe. It's it's easy to work with. Okay. This is my next question. The, you got it. The pipes. They're usually all spruce. Okay. Just like a sounding board on a piano. Yes. And you can tell by the fine lines here. Okay. And a lot of the uh, manufacturers would buy their pipes from different companies that made pipes. Bursons actually made all of them. He had a room just for drying the wood for a couple years, and he made all of his own stuff. Okay. 
Now, the principle in which this organ plays nice. It's kind of like a player piano, um, but basically there's a pump in the back, and I can show you that, and it pumps air, and so it acts like a big bellows. All right. And so all this is pressurized. And then there's a, a book, which, uh, it's a cardboard book, we open it up, there's a bunch of holes, okay. and that make, goes over a uh, bunch of fingers, and the fingers are under spring pressure, and when there's a hole, it pops up, and that activates a valve which plays that note. Okay. So, so let's, in fact, the hole lets air pressure through? And... Yeah, no, it actually lets a little spring piece of steel oh, through which okay. operates a valve. And so oh, these are the books, okay. and all of these are pretty much hand-punched. Wow. These books play for a couple of minutes, but I have books in the cases there that play for about 20 minutes. Wow. They're just one solid string of cardboard. And that you would set this up as a feed-in on the back side? Sure. Let's let the cameraman go first here. So this is where the uh, cardboard book comes through. And you can see there's a bunch of little fingers here. Well, when, sure. the, when there's no holes, it pushes the fingers down, and it keeps the note from playing. When there's a hole in the cardboard book, the fingers come up through that hole and operate some valves, and then that plays the notes. At this point, and I, I don't know what it takes to get this fired up, is there, uh, do you plan on playing later, or? Uh, yeah, right now I'm shut down because um, there's an event going on in the main stage. Understandable, yes. But I think I'll be playing about 11.15 again. Okay, we will try to circle back, because this is a, your knowledge of this instrument is, is second to none, and very impressed with the, Look at this. This is unbelievable. Those are those uh, plastic airlines. Is that what? Uh, yes. Okay. And so, these are valve chests. Those are the bellows. Okay. Um, and then there's a big pipe chest. So there, there's a lot that goes into it. But you know, where the crankshaft is going, the bellows is going up and down. And, right. Uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. Okay. So once you get a book set up and the the if you want to call a compressor going and the bellows are going, you as the operator, is there anything left for you to do? Um. No. Okay. It, it should go through on its own. Sometimes, if it's a little stiff, um, it might get stuck. Sometimes, so I so help feed. To, sure. I babysit it. Uh, but it's, it should be fully automatic. Okay. And then right. different ranks of pipes will switch on and off automatically also. Wow. I'm impressed. And you're the most important thing? I want to get your name one more time. Oh, my name is Dan. Dan, you're a wealth of information. We're going to try to come back later when you... Uh, when you uh, put a book through and play us a tune. Oh, that's fine, and I'll, I'll let you put the book through and, and you can play the tune. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. This is a very expensive piece of equipment, very rare, but... By the way, what does this weigh? Um... You gotta guess. I'm, I'm guessing... 800, 1,000 Wow, pounds. I, I was gonna say like 500, but I... Wow. Because there's, there's, if you look, there's bass pipes in, in the top, there's oh, yeah. bass pipes in the bottom, yeah. uh, there's drums. It's heavy. Yeah, I would imagine. Okay, thanks again. Okay, I'm sure there's some other people want to talk to you. I'm sorry I took so much of your time, but it was a wealth of information. Come on back when you have a chance. Okay, thanks again. <laughs> well, well, these are pretty tough, though, right? I think No, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're pretty tough. Is this an old Michigan tradition called apple tossing? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're tossing them. <laughs> yeah, we are tossing them. <laughs> okay. I gotta hand it to you guys. I mean, to, to drive down and I haven't hit, just picked these in the last 24 hours. Really, that's really. Yeah, crazy. yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you look good for having to been on the ladder, you know, I, up in the orchard like that. Oh yeah, I didn't even sleep last night trying to make it down <laughs> really? here. So it's, it's, so it's, it's tough driving a big rig too on I-80 coming down. It's yep. a long, it's a long ride. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you got to get some names here, and you are. I'm Jason. Jason, great. Yep. Thanks for being a good sport with me coming up. Yeah. I'm Tom. Tommy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what variety is this, just out of curiosity? These are Honeycrisp. Okay. okay. And Galas. Okay. The, the, those I recognize. This, these I didn't. So these, are, these are the number one apple right now. Everybody wants these. It's got that sweet, sour thing going on. You know, I heard somebody at work talking about that, and I'm thinking, what is she? Yeah. I didn't even know what it was called. Okay, she had one. Yeah. Yep, yep. So okay. So this great. is the new fad apple, if, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> New sure. fad, yep. Okay. Go uh, ahead and try one. Can you, uh, no, I, well, well, maybe we'll let our camera guy try one. There we go. But anyhow, um. Can you bake with this also? Or not right, not okay, really. It's just really it's good for a, yeah. a, a nice experience when you bite into it. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
All right. Well, at that, we'll let you guys continue your apple, apple tossing <laughs> campaign. All righty. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Have a Thanks great so day. much. Have a great day. Stay yeah, hydrated, stay guys. Stay All cool. right. We'll do. Yeah. Thanks. While you guys are carving, I just have to say this for our audience at home, it doesn't get any fresher than this, right? No, very fresh. And who are we talking to today? I'm Dale Eriks. Dale? And? Jim Scaringa. Yep. Uh, I, folks, if you can see this on our camera, this is a beautifully meaty watermelon, very little seeds, and uh, they're making these fresh fruit plates in this 100 degree temperature, and I tell you, this will refresh you. Are we on television? It's not live, but yeah. Are you in charge of the bananas by any chance? I am. <laughs> we have a banana expert here at Elam today, and we're we're going to find a little bit about uh, why uh, how to buy bananas. First of all, that would be a good one. These are obviously a little bit green. Probably the right way to buy them. Is that correct? Yes. If you like green bananas. They only, you know, ripen up in a couple days and they'd be golden good. Okay. Jenna is the name? Yes. Jenna, thank you for speaking with us. And also, one quick question. When you're at home, how do you store bananas so they're not get, like, bruised up or anything? Do you, do you hang them? Do you lay them on the counter? Do you put them in the refrigerator? Or? I put it, mine in my refrigerator. So do I. People think I'm nuts. Why is that? <laughs> I'm not sure. I really like cold bananas. Same here. And I'm uh, tempted to uh, might slice a few and some ice cream once in a while. But hey, don't tell anybody, right? You know. So, anyway, thank you so much. We're, we're going to move down and get some. I think we have an expert on pineapples next. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's Kevin Hahn. And uh, uh, he's direct, directly here from Hawaii. He just brought this load in here. So we're going to. Yep. Hello, Aloha. Aloha. What's okay. up? I just want to kind of see what you guys are doing today. Okay. Good, okay. how are you? Very uh, good. Okay. What's the best way to, like, core pineapple? Okay. Like, you just, I, yeah. I've seen them in white. They actually get a I'm machete. They're good at cutting pineapples. Oh, so what I do, okay. yeah. Here we go. You cut the top off, and then you cut the bottom off, and then usually I'll cut, like, four lines around it. Okay. So then you take the core out, and then on each little half, you just take a knife and cut the skin off, and then you can chop it up from there. Wow. So top, bottom, cut around the, the middle, and then you cut the skin off. I'm impressed because I have a tendency to... It's actually uh, shows you right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was a little cheat sheet on there. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. No, I have a tendency to waste some of the core, waste some of the meaty pineapple oh, because okay. I'm trying to get a nice a cylinder, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And uh, your method, though, is spot on. Uh -huh. It's, it's going to get everything in there. Yeah, yeah. no waste. So, okay, one last question, because I've seen people do this before. They actually save the green top, and they can actually uh, I didn't know put it in that. water. And they, I mean, it just for a, it lasts as a green plant for a few weeks. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, really? Mm. But I'm sure you're not going to grow a pineapple out of it. The so. only thing I use the green top for is to, like, tell if the pineapple's ripe. So if you try to pull one of these and it comes off, you know it's ripe. So if you have, like, a really green one, okay. and if the top doesn't come off easily, well, these are all pretty ripe. Okay. But if the top doesn't come off easily, then you know it has to sit for a little wow. while. Longer. Great news, great information. We yeah. appreciate that. For of course, sure. I don't know if they're going to like me going to, going to Waltz and some of these other stores yanking on their pineapples. Uh, what the heck? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Kevin, for enlightening us. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks. Does anyone here want to talk about eggplants? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is there an eggplant? They're all running away. There's no eggplant experts. Okay. Um, uh, broccoli? Is there a broccoli expert here? <laughs> the diff they're all running away. How about the difference between a red pepper and a green pepper? Bell pepper. The color. Okay. We got and we got to know who who just gave us that bit of information. Your name? Anna Delahunty. Anna Delahunty. Oh, yeah. sweet. Okay. And Lexi. Lexi Terpstra. Okay. I have to ask, what brings you guys to the produce stand today? You're just volunteering your time for school or something? Yeah, we're volunteering our time, and we're just with our family. This is oh, our family. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Okay. I didn't mean to blindside you with the uh, with the produce questions, but it was just I thought it was just cute your reaction yeah. to it, but you ran with it. That tells me a lot about you. So. Listen, have a prosperous day and you stay too. hydrated. You too. Have okay. a nice day. You too. Bye, Bye now.
I have a, just a quick word with you guys, and you're serving potatoes and beef, and uh, is it Ken? Ken Hoving. Ken Hoving. How are you doing today? Wayne David. Wayne. Uh, given the weather and given your hot food and how are things going? Good. Not bad. We got Very a good morning. Back here and okay, yeah, I'm feeling a nice breeze from that box. Got a little breeze. Uh, you want to try any hot spot? It's good uh, for you. I don't know, but I guess uh, we should we sample some. Okay, I guess we're we'll All right. We'll try a few samples here. You don't have to give us a quantity, just... Just, just enough. That's okay. Just enough to... Listen. And you've got to have potatoes and carrots. Okay. All the food groups are represented here. And uh, let, me, let me run over to this young lady while they're doing this. Gwen, were you up cooking all night? Oh, all night. All night. It, you can tell she was just in that kitchen, just slaving away at it. Exactly. So, so we could... <laughs> We, Wayne is saying something here. What is it? That's, a, that's a favorite place. To no, kiss. I know. I know. <laughs> Get up anyway, in the morning. It's off to the kitchen. It's off right. to the kitchen. We hope you enjoy this. Well, thank you so very, very much. You're very, very kind. Thank you bet. Okay. Enjoy. Enjoy. Okay, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break here and sample some authentic Netherlands food here. Cook, cook earnestly by Gwen. 24 hours she was in that kitchen, so the last 24 hours. So. All right, stay with us. We got more coming from here at Elam Fest. <laughs> and I think we're looking at polar sausage. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to ask Dave Paninski, the owner and operator of uh, AC Variety. What what are we looking at, Dave? Sausage. <laughs> you can see he was a man of few words when he's got that camera in his hand. All right. Let's move on. This is so cool. There's so in the little shops here at Dutch Fest, there are so many confections and everything else uh, right behind uh, Dave is, a, is a, a homemade cheese and stuff. Take a look at this stuff. It is great. China, and we're going to find out a little bit more about it. It is exquisite looking, and your name, first of all. Wanda Bild. Wanda, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at right now. All right, all of our Delft is quality, Absolutely. except this, this table in particular is our very best. Okay. And most of it is named, our, our very best seller is DeWitt, right. which is... Um, That's okay, the mark can, of DeWitt. Okay, if we can all see that. The crossed, crossed uh, paint brushes with DW. People like DeWitt because it's all hand painted okay. and done very well. Now, DeWitt is traditionally, in all the years, has been manufactured where? In the Netherlands. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to hear you say it, you know, for, oh, yes. for our audience. Oh, yes. Um, um, it's, it's, just, it's just beautiful. Uh, 
with hand painted pieces like that, do they number the pieces or? or? Uh, well, the very the top line okay. is porcelain of flight. Oh, okay. that is made in Delft. I do okay. not even carry that okay. because it's very expensive and. If somebody wants to order that, I sure. will order it for them. Okay. But and to put it out on a table oh, no, I, where it I, could fall. That's I, glass showcase stuff, yeah. really. And and one last question. Do you find that uh, generations of people collect it with? In other words, uh, grandma, mom, daughter? Yes. They, they. It seems like this generation is picking up again. That on, is so good to hear. <laughs> yes, it is good to hear. Uh, and you know, a lot of grandmas, a lot of families are looking to uh, downsize, sure. or, and they have to get rid of their gift, and they throw it in the garbage. Oh, don't even tell me that. So let me show you this table. Okay, let's take a look this real whole, fast. This whole table, now look. I, it's once, once used. used by a sweet Dutch lady, Okay. which means go. this has been donated to us from different people. And it's wonderful for Elam because it's a hundred percent profit. It's all donated, and and it's a good deal for the people that buy it because we can put good prices on it. I was just going to say you probably have some very unique pieces here too. Yes, and a lot of our customers come to this table first because they know what good buys they can get, and some of it's antique, some of it's oh, old, yeah. and it is not made anymore. So. All right. Well, we want to thank you for taking the time to step up and kind of show us around this okay. and give us a little education. We'll just on the look way. around because we've got a lot of fun things. Okay. Thank you again and have, have a prosperous day. Thank you. On that. <laughs> We're going to get some names here because she's going, oh God, there's a camera. No. Oh, oh goodness, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Anyhow, your name? My name's Dan. Dan and? I'm Kelly. Okay, Dan and Kelly, did you have any idea when you got this morning you're going to have a TV camera pointing at your face at Elon Place? Uh, no. No. <laughs> well, not the wildest, no right. But you, I got a compliment you. You find a nice place underneath the shade tree to kind of chill and yeah. enjoy the day. So. 
Okay. Thanks for being good sports. No, no problem. Uh, have a great day. <laughs> Stay hydrated, right? Thanks. <laughs> Liz, can we jump in, or are you super busy? Yeah, go ahead. All right, first of all, happy one year. Happy one year. So how's your year been? Very good, how's yours? Ups and downs, but that's what life's all about. Yes. So today, I see you're kind of back at your old trade again here. Yep. Kind of tell us what's going on again. Okay, so we've got cherry pie, apple pie, pumpkin, bonquette, and almond puffs. And we're selling them for four tickets for the pies. Bonquette for two, and we have coffee for one ticket. Okay. So come out and enjoy. I, I'm thinking hot coffee on 100 degree today. Uh, I don't know what he's. Ice uh, can we put some ice cubes in there? <laughs> yeah, you can put some ice cubes in there. I'm not sure where you're gonna find it, but you know <laughs> most of it's gone and melted. But it's just like Starbucks, you know what the heck. So yeah. And of course, we always ask this the annual question. You know, Liz was up all night baking. Is that correct? No, no. <laughs> It's actually was donated by Doughboys. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Those boys. Those boys. Those boys. <laughs> Sounds kind of Dutch to me. Those boys. But. Yep. All right. Well, at this point, I want to thank you for time breaking away, speaking with us. I'd like to see old friends like yourself, and uh, wish you all the best as we finish out 2017. You too. All right. Bye thank now. Thank you for coming. You bet. <laughs> Welcome to Dutch Fest. Great day today. A little hot, but we're doing great. We got some beans, we got burgers, chips, all you need. We got some cold water back here. We're going to find out who this gentleman is who's vending, and you are. My name is Ron Taslart. I'm um, from Villa Park, Illinois, and uh, this is our fourth or fifth year volunteering here at the, uh, the burger booth. And we got our whole family here. We got oh, that's, that's generational nice. thing. You know, this is a wonderful event. Okay. Uh, we love supporting it. Former uh, board member here, Arnie Colton Ovens, okay. the captain of the team. You know, there he is. Got it. Oh, and his sister's even back over here. Show him what you're her, making, Who Avery. was trying to hide real fast, but we got her in. <laughs> we'll get the camera over there. Are you hungry? Cheeseburger. Okay, here we go. <laughs> How many? Nine, nine years? years? Well, my hat's off to you. Very, very good. <laughs> and your name was? Barbara Leap. Okay. Nice, nice to be Sally aboard, Barb. Sally? Sally? Excellent. And you're the one that likes the half butter on the That's ear right. corn. That's right. We have a half butter person here. <laughs> Would you guys like an ear corn? Uh, well, hey, why not? Yeah, why not? Do you want an ear corn? Yeah, well, why not? Thank you. Okay, this is one of the fun things you can do at Dutch Fest here at Elam. Loving it. Um, actually, I'm taking up a lot of space. I have a bunch of little kids behind me that want to do this, but I'm the big kid that's kind of wrecking everything right now, so I might just get out of the way and, you know. Reminds me of my school days, uh, the little clothing uniform here that's here. But anyhow, okay, stay with us. We got some cool stuff coming. Hey, everybody, I'm Justin Moore, and you're watching AC Variety. soup is that? Oh, you know, uh, purple something. Is, is it a grape in the grape family? I, I don't suggest drinking it or no. eating it for that yeah, matter. It I, I like to replenish. 
Yes, if you want to hydrate today, we would not recommend this. But some crystal clear glazer water, thumbs up, right? Uh, you got the big one right there. Here, chug that. Yeah, that, that should do it. Okay, thank you. Oh, your name? Nate. Nate, thanks, thanks. Nate gave us the insight on what to drink and what not to drink. Thanks, Nate. Not a problem. I don't know about you, but we had a great time here at AC Variety and acbnetworktv.com. Hey, if you couldn't be here this year, enjoy this video that we just did. If you put it on your calendar for next year, the Elam uh, Fest is just, it's, it's superb. It's for a great cause, and uh, there's so many things to see from, from the crafts and the traditional stuff from the Netherlands, from food to pottery to uh, the making of wooden shoes even. It's just unbelievable. And we actually got to see this year a uh, Dutch uh, street organ that, that uh, you would commonly see in cities in, uh, in the Netherlands and such, and uh, that they would actually go down the street, play, the thing was on rollers, you heard it, it was beautiful. So, without further ado, thank you for watching acvariety.com. We're right here by the windmill, as traditionally do our closing. We're also right here by where they do the uh, train rides, which is a lot of fun for all the kids. So, uh, again, 
Uh, if, you, if you didn't make it this year, put it on your calendar for next year. On behalf of AC Variety and Dave Paninski, the owner and operator of AC Variety, who's on camera today, and myself, Jamal LaRusso, we thank you so much for viewing. Stay tuned for bigger and better things. Bye-bye for now.